Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. U.S. stocks have just accomplished something that hasn't happened since 1972. With the 5,000-point milestone being closed above for the very first time, it brings us to some significant data points. What happens during the Lunar New Year? What happens after? And more importantly, what does the close of the S&P 500 mean at this point? Today, we'll discuss this week's OPEX and the big options that are about to expire. Generally, what occurs is a rally followed by a sell-off afterwards, but there are still opportunities on the horizon in smaller stocks. Huge imbalances between the Russell and the SPI, and of course other sectors, mean there's a lot to discuss. Join us as we cover stocks, commodities, and cryptos today. The S&P 500 closed above $5,000 for the first time in history, as tech stocks continue to reach new highs. Microsoft and NVIDIA hit all-time highs again this week, while BTC topped $47,000 with ETFs showing steady inflow. The rate of inflation is slowing. How quickly it slows toward low pre-pandemic levels will determine when the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates and brings relief to home buyers and other borrowers. The latest reading on inflation comes on Tuesday with January's Consumer Price Index. Economists polled by the Wall Street Journal forecast a mild 0.2% in increase in consumer prices in the first month of 2024. The inflation rate in the past 12 months would decelerate to 2.9% from a prior 3.4%. If forecasters are right, it would mark the first time the CPI has fallen below 3% in almost three years. The drama in the report, if there's any, is likely to come from the more closely followed core CPI that omits food and energy prices. The core rate is viewed as a better predictor of future inflation. Total U.S. consumer credit rose by $1.5 billion in December, down from a $23.4 billion gain in the previous month, the Federal Reserve said Wednesday. That translates to a 0.4% annual growth rate in December, down from a 5.7% increase in November. It is the slowest pace of credit growth since an outright drop in August. Economists had been expecting a $15 billion increase in consumer credit in December, according to a Wall Street Journal forecast. Key details. Revolving credit, such as credit cards, slowed to a 1% growth rate after a 16.6% gain in the prior month. Non-revolving credit, such as car and student loans, rose a slight 0.2% after a 1.8% rise in the previous month. This category of credit is typically much less volatile. The Fed data do not include mortgage loans, which is the largest category of household debt. And also, I want to say congratulations to the Chiefs for winning the 2024 Super Bowl. This disparity appears unsustainable, and the recent rise in agricultural commodity prices is expected to have a substantial effect on overall food prices, which are poised for a significant rebound. Additionally, the continuous surge in global freight costs is likely to contribute to upward pressure on consumer prices. These are noteworthy developments in the realm of inflation that seem to be disregarded by many, including policymakers. It's evident that the inflationary problem remains deeply ingrained in the system and is far from being resolved. It's always sobering to see that the government's own forecast for federal debt could ultimately grow to be around 50% larger than the levels witnessed during World War II all without factoring in any significant recessions or major geopolitical conflicts along the way. The first half is usually positive, but only for some indices, and it's typically weak or choppy on the value side. Mainly, it's an earnings gamble. The last half is often characterized by declines, so there isn't much to say outside of get your bear suit. Just make sure to pause the video and take a screenshot so you can use it. Again, still green with all mega caps performing well after good earnings. Nothing crazy. Only two stocks had a good week. NVIDIA was up 9% and LLY was up more than 10%. And here are the earnings we have for this week. I've marked the most important one you need to watch closely. All election years up when January barometer up. The S&P 500 gained 1.6% in January. Thus, our January barometer is positive for 2024. Full years followed January's direction in 12 of the last 18 presidential election years. However, nine election years since 1950, with an up January barometer, are up 100% of the time, with an average 15.6% S&P 500 gain.
The January barometer is not a standalone indicator. Use it in conjunction with other data and indicators to confirm or question your assessment of the market. Since 1938, when the January barometer was positive, the full year was positive 86.5% of the time. And when it's down, the year was up 44.1% of the time. Every down January since 1950 was followed by a new or continuing bear market, a 10% correction, or a flat year. Down Januaries were followed by substantial declines averaging 13.3%. All right, let's look at some charts that I'm focusing on this week. I'll also show you some other charts about SPX later in the video. The first chart I'm looking at this week is Boeing, BA, which closed the week at 209.20, in the middle of a range from 200 to 215. We're currently waiting for it to pick a direction. If it breaks above 215, we'll take profit at 228, where the price slightly consolidated. We'll hold a runner up to the 245 area for a longer term hold. If the price breaks below 200, our next area of interest is the 188 level, which was a small resistance turn support previously. Next chart, let's look at Tesla. Tesla closed the week at 193. We're waiting to see what happens around the 195 area. If the price breaks above with strength, we'll look to fill the gap up to 208 and take profit there. If the price rejects 195, we'll hold down to the 180 support area and take profit there. Let's move on to the next chart, Disney. Disney closed the week at 108 after exciting news and earnings this week. We're waiting to see what happens at the 1 or 10 level. If the price breaks above with strength, the next resistance area is at 115 and that'll be where we take profit. If the price rejects this area, we'll take profit first at 106 and then hold to fill the gap from before earnings at the 99.950, 100 area. All right, I did some digging for you guys, and I found out what happened before when the market broke psychological numbers like 1,000 or 2,000. I'm going to start with what happened after the S&P 500 broke the 1,000 mark. After the price broke 1,000, the market went up by 19%. However, in the second half of the year, the market experienced a pullback of 21% followed by another rally. By the end of the year, the market had rallied again. The next chart shows the price after breaking fusion mark. It was on August 26, 2014, and the price went up almost 1%. After that, the market experienced a correction and a sell-off of 10%. Again, by the end of the year, the price went up again. Let's see what happened after the market broke 3,000 on July 10, 2019. The market stayed above 3,000 for a couple of months and went up only by 1%. Near September, the market experienced a sell-off of 7% and rallied again by the end of the year. And last but not least, let's look at what happened after the market broke 4,000 on March 31st, 2021. After the market broke the 4,000 mark, it rallied up by almost 21% in eight months. However, after that, the price experienced a correction of 28%, and that marked the market's low in October 2022, essentially marking the market bottom there. Now that the market has passed 5,000, what do you think will happen next? Write your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think the market will continue to push higher, or are we going to see a pullback? This week, we have several key events scheduled. On Tuesday, we'll be closely watching U.S. CPI inflation data. Additionally, Coca-Cola, KO, will be releasing their earnings report on the same day. Moving on to Wednesday, Cisco is set to announce their earnings. Thursday brings a flurry of economic indicators, including U.S. retail sales, initial jobless claims, the NY Fed Manufacturing Survey, the Philly Fed Manufacturing Survey, and a speech from FOMC member Waller. On the corporate side, Coinbase, Coin, will be reporting their earnings. Finally, wrapping up the week on Friday, We'll be paying attention to U.S. PPI inflation figures and consumer sentiment data. If you found value in this video, please consider subscribing and giving it a like. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye for now.